So it's so good to be back here in America. I thank the Lord for everybody who prayed because I'm telling you, God really showed up. And from uh, like Lisa Williams here, I don't know if she's here. Um, oh, there she is. Lisa Williams, we were at a Bible study and she, she looked at me. I mean, all the ladies were praying, but she said, I'm, I'm believing God, I decree for an upgrade. And I'm like, yes. I said, Lord, I am trusting you for an upgrade because you know when you're flying all those miles and everyone I'm traveling with is in business class and I'm stuck in coach, you know, that's not cool. So, and your back gets scrunched and everything else. So that whole day I said, Lord, I am trusting you for an upgrade. I am trusting you and I am believing that it's not gonna cost me a million dollars either. I'm trusting you for this upgrade. I get, I call up. No upgrade. I call, I get to the airport ticket counter. They said, no, it's all, you can't get an upgrade. I said, and the Lord said to me, didn't I tell you, you would have an upgrade? And I'm like, you know how we get? We go back and forth. And I'm like, yes, I know. That's right. You did tell me that. We went down to the gate and uh, they, the guy at first said no. Then he looked and he goes, oh my. He said, something just opened up. I have one seat that just opened up. I said, well, how much? <laughs> Cause I don't care, how, you know, how much? And then he said to me, well, I don't know, it might be $300. Because if you try to get it that day, it's not as expensive, right? And I'm like, $300. So he said, but you know what? You need to call. You need to make a phone call. He said, because we aligned with US here. We can't do whatever, whatever. And I'm like, all right, I have three hours here. I might as well just do it. I called him up. And the guy said, yeah, we have one C. I I said, how much? And he said, $75. I'm like, <laughs> I said, I'll take it. <laughs> I will take it. And, you're, and everyone who paid, a lot of money to go in business. I'm like, I am the favorite of the Lord. I got it for $75. So, so I was very excited about that. And it's the little things in life. But, you know, listen, I was trusting the Lord for that. I was able to recline all the way back. And so I'm so tall. That's right. And I needed that. But, um, you know, God, God, you know, those little things. And then I had, and I'll share a little bit about an encounter that I was not going to share about, but the Lord made it very clear to me that I was to share today about this encounter in Israel, uh, Romania, you know, and Romania. You know, these people had to trust God, period. They have to lean and partner with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Spirit. It's a new word. They, you know, you just see the miracle working power of Jesus. And, you know, these people who we were at this church, uh, Pastor uh, Daniel Matea, I think his name, something like that. And um, he's been here in America to preach. And the, the husband and wife start sharing a little testimony about, you know, their, their journey. And, you know, they, it's still communist, not as bad as it had been, but they had to swim across the Danube River to escape the communists shooting at them with their machine guns. And they were telling how Holy Spirit directed them every step of the way. And how even at one point, the wife said, where we were going and they, they started shining their spotlight on the river and they went back and she said, we didn't even know why we were going back. We were so desperate to cross over and we heard to go back and had we had gone because other people were killed, they were shooting people. And they were just talking about Holy Spirit and the reality of partnering with Holy Spirit. And then they asked us to pray for them. And I'm like, <laughs> I haven't crossed over the Danube River. I haven't had anybody shoot at me and I'm not praying for you. And, um, you know, but it was just that kind of faith and that tenacity. And so when we were there, these people fasted and prayed for days before they came. They prepared themselves. They were going to grab hold of whatever God had. And, and I think that that's a little bit missing here in America and that God wants to restore that and God wants to shift things and get us to that place of that hunger for God and knowing that God is calling us into a whole nother level, which I'll, I'll get into in a little bit. Then we went to India and how many of you know, remember I said no bugs? Now, now how many of you know that that's a miracle for even for those of you who are from India that, that I did not see one bug in India, not one bug, not one bug in my room, not one bug. And, um, you know, we saw a lot of things out in India, but I didn't see any bugs. I didn't even see a fly. And so it, it is a miracle because you call those things, which be not as though they are. I said, Lord, you know that India was one place that, you know, I, I haven't always prayed about going to. And I said, but I'm, I will go. The people were the most amazing people. 
you ever want to meet, we, were, we went to one of the orphanages out there where these kids are just abandoned because the parents can't afford them. And so they just leave these kids. And, and then the, the sister of the guy that, uh, who had the orphanage, she um, oversees uh, this ministry called Restoration, and I forget what the whole thing was called, but something Restoration, where they are helping these children escape sex trafficking, which is huge out there. And the age group of choice is three to six years of age. So now we're talking depravity to the utmost. I mean, perversion, demonic, uh, you know, control. But these people have hope for freedom. These people had a hope. And so we're in these meetings. People came from Nepal. They came from China. They came, they, they days. And so there were some rooms available that were on the premises. They had seven to 10 to 12 people sleeping in one room. They just had cots. You know, they, they were hungry. They wanted to learn about the apostolic. I said, the apostolic? They wanted to learn about the apostolic. They wanted to learn about church government. They wanted to learn about breaking out in greater miracles and greater power. And, um, and I'm thinking again, you guys need to lay hands on us. Oh, my gosh, the hunger and the desperation that's in their hearts. And listen, God's not, you know, I, I, please hear me today when I say this. I, you know, God's not looking to browbeat any of us. He just wants us to know that we have so much going for us and that there's so much that we can uh, flow in and operate in that we haven't attained yet. We haven't been there yet. And that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today, that God wants to break through in our lives in a greater dimension. And, and the thing that really stuck out with me was just the hunger and the desperation. They would just come up to you and just bow their head like that. And they just wanted us to, to lay hands on, on them and just pray. And, and, and that was even just good enough for them. And, um, and the miracles that we heard about and the healings and the deliverances, just, just believing God for, for blind eyes to open, believing God for total transformation, total deliverance, not, not wallowing in, 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 in self-pity. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I would behave. I, I don't know. But you never know until you're in it. But the tenacity and the, and the perseverance, and, and I am going to support this ministry with these kids and the sex trafficking out there. It's something when you know the people, you know, and, and you do know where the money's going. And, and just that one of the pastors, when we were out there, um, he was supposed to be in the meeting. And uh, what happened was they arrested him. They were torturing him while we were having this meeting and we were like broken hearted and we were really praying and I still don't know what the outcome because they didn't release him while we were there these people are persecuted and these people are saying we will not give up we will not say no to Jesus because Jesus is our only hope we will not say no to Jesus and I said well there's no other king but King Jesus amen 